blah. <laughs> okay, Hocus Pocus 2. This is another one of those sequels that comes out 30 years after the original. And I have to say, right off the bat, the three sisters, Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, and the third one, who's hilarious, and I can never remember her name, they look amazing. They look absolutely amazing. You know, 30 years, three decades, it's it's a weird amount of time because when we think about, say, 30 years from like 1950 to 1980 or 1955 to 1985 via Back to the Future, it feels like this ocean of time. But 30 years from 2022 to 1993 doesn't, like 1993 for some reason still feels like yesterday. And the scary fact is that the 90s are essentially the 50s now, if you could believe it. That is a terrifying notion, but it is the truth. It is reality. And so, you know, and it's weird too, because like usually, you know, movie movie stories or movie arcs or whatever, they come in threes, right? We get a trilogy. It's always about the trilogy. But lately, I mean, in the last 10 years or so, we've been getting these like duologies. We get these strange follow-up movies. Look at Top Gun Maverick. Look at Train Spotting 2, which was actually a really good follow-up sequel. Um, we just get these. We just get these movies so far after, like like even between Th Fury Road and Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Thirty years, thirty years, and that's a third sequel to a fourth sequel. That's that's mind boggling. Um, so it's Halloween in Salem, and we got three girls, teenage girls. One of them, they they kind of have like a coven. One of them's like too cool for school for the other two. And the, the black candle gets lit, the sisters come back, and it's just, you know, it's fine. It's fine to quote Bob Rose, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I, you know, did we need the sequel? No. Is it fun to have a sequel? Sure. Why not? It's fun. It's fun for the whole family. Hocus Pocus has a very dedicated cult fan base. It is one of those movies, when a movie comes out and it's synonymous with a holiday, it has the ability to sort of transcend the normal lifespan of any movie and, you know, find its cult status. Look at A Christmas Story. Look at Nightmare Before Christmas. These movies are, get tied to the holiday. People watch these movies in order to feel the holiday. It's the same thing with The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, the Disney cartoon. I need to watch that every fall so that I feel the season. I feel the holiday. And now we have a sequel. And some people are like, why do we have this? Like, I don't understand why this exists. We don't need it. And it's like, who cares, man? Like, honestly, does it really bother you? It's like so completely inconsequential. In any case, that we get a little bit of a flashback. We see the sisters when they're when they're girls and they first get the book, the eyeball book, the, the magic grimoire, as they call it. A grimoire is like a book of spells. And um, they learn about this special, uh, this special magical power magic spell that is like the supreme spell. You're never supposed to use it because it comes at a price. And of course, that pays off later at the end. Hijinks ensue. They, you know, they do a great job. You know, we get a little meta commentary. There's like, there's like Sanderson sister lookalike contest and they don't win a lookalike contest. And even though they are the OG original, which is always, that's always fun. And uh, they go into a Walgreens and there's a lot, they, you know, they think it's an apoth apothecary is the word, uh, which is like sort of like an old school. You see it in Romeo and Juliet, the guy who deals the poison. It's like an old school place to pick up your drugs. That's what it was. That's where you get your prescription, you know? And um, they're off to find something or other. They got to like figure out, they want to like stay, you know, they want to stay on the earth. It's been 300 years. They got to do it before the candle. It's the same story as the first one. And we got a great gag with some robot. What is it? The, what is it? The, the, the vacuum, the flat vacuum disc that the robot, the robot vacuum, they do a great gag with the robot vacuum. She's standing on them. She's like Green Goblin style standing on the robot vacuums. That was a, that was a fun gag. It's just fun, man. It's fun. It's fun to watch with your kids. It's so, it's interesting how, you know, a, a Halloween movie can either be a horror movie or a scary movie, or it could just be a movie that really sort of like hones in on the holiday. And I would say that Hocus Pocus and its sequel fall into the latter 
of those ca uh, camps. And then, you know, at the end, we find out one of the girls is actually a witch. And um, Winnie, played by uh, Winifred, played by Bette Midler, who's, like, amazing in this role. And, you know, there's so much, like, there's almost, like, a little bit of, like, we get a little Dr. Frankenfooter in there, which goes to show where really the origin of the Dr. Frankenfooter character comes from strong willed older women. And that's where Tim Curry was kind of like zeroing in because there's a similar sort of energy from Bette Midler as the, 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 the head Sanderson sister. And she's got to choose. She's going to become the most powerful witch and she has to choose between her sisters or being the most powerful witch and staying on the planet. And she chooses instead to be reunited with her sisters because what fun is anything without your sisters and your family? Choosing family and love over power, it's a great message. We get um, Doug Jones is back. You know, Doug Jones, really tall guy, he plays uh, Billy Butcherson in the original. I think it was actually his breakout role. And he's returned now, and this time he can actually speak. He actually has a speaking part which is, I'm sure, something that Doug Jones always goes for. Even in when you look at what, him in Hellboy, he plays Abe Abe Sapien or whatever, but it's David Hyde Pierce's speaking voice. Why not Doug Jones? Doug Jones wants to talk too. And Doug Jones is just a, a tremendous physical performer. He's really, really tall, really, really skinny. I guarantee if you've seen any sort of like movie with like you know a creature in it, it probably had Doug Jones in it. And so he's back as Billy... And he's, you know, he's a part of the whole thing. And they set us up with like a little end cap. There's another candle uh, after credit scene. So there is another candle. Maybe the witches will be back. I say give us, listen, if we're, if we're already two in, give us a third one and round it out to be a trilogy. However, the witches were very much the antagonists in the first film. And in this film, they're, le I mean, they're a little less, a little less. So we also get the guy from uh, Arrested Development. He's in, he plays the mayor and he's a descendant of their mortal enemy, uh, who was, I guess, the Reverend of of Salem way back when. And that's it. That's all I really have to say. Quick and dirty review. I'm not even going to edit this thing. We're just going to put it out there. And now, a quick word from our sponsor. Oh, I thought I... Ah! 